Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, as you may or may not know, uh, this weekend is Valentine's Day. Now, that's probably not generally considered to be a very War Games-centric uh, holiday, but nonetheless, I thought it might be fun to find something that's sort of slotted in to the kind of holiday theme. And I ended up coming up with a rather unusual figure. Actually, figures, I should say, because it's sort of a combo. Here we have this rather creative uh, rendition of uh, Frankenstein and his bride, sort of in the traditional sort of early uh, 20th century monster movie style. I like, especially like the touch that Frankenstein's uh, bride here looks less than thrilled, whereas Frankenstein seems absolutely in love. And she is uh, standing there suddenly, however, but with a knife kind of hidden behind her back, which I think is kind of funny. Uh, these figures are by War Games Foundry, uh, though I really don't think they're available on their website now. Um, maybe they'll offer this model again in the future, but anyway, I couldn't find it, but you might be able to pick it up on eBay. I noticed there were some offered there. Of course, I base coded the figures here, but you'll notice I haven't done the scan or anything else, and that's probably for obvious reasons, I would think, because obviously, uh, the Frankenstein monsters have pretty unnatural skin tones, and that's what I'm going to be definitely showing you a lot of in this tutorial is some kind of unnatural skin tones. Frankenstein, of course, is known, Frankenstein monster, I should say, is known, at least in the movies, to have sort of a greenish skin. And so I'm going to be doing him kind of green. His bride, on the other hand, is just more sort of pale and kind of like corpse, I think, colored in you know, her skin. So I'm going to be doing her just a little bit differently. But this should be an interesting tutorial for anybody who's looking for some tips and paying strange skin colors that are just a little bit out of left field. Even if you don't have this particular model, and you probably won't, and let's face it, it's not exactly a particularly uh, useful model under pretty much any circumstance I can think of. But anyway, it should give you some ideas for painting weird skin. And um, otherwise, the models are pretty simple. They're wearing very simple kind of white and black. Uh, the, there's not going to be a lot of other sort of uh, complexities here. Though, of course, there are the, the areas on the figures are large areas of white and black. So I know people always appreciate seeing, you know, more renditions of the, painting those two colors because they just tend to stay problematic. Uh, they're still problematic even for me. So I figure the more examples I can give you of those, the better. Uh, so uh, I think that's all for now. So I'm going to get started on this rather unusual figure for Valentine's Day. I'm going to start out working on the skin of the Frankenstein monster here. Now, in movies and stuff, which is what I'm basing this on, his skin tends to be pretty on the really, you know, green sides. I mean, it's really, really green. Um, so the base coat that I picked out for him is Reflective Green from Vallejo, which I'm just going to put on all of the flesh areas. Now the wash that I usually use on flesh is obviously not going to cut it here, so I've made up a new one. This is a mixture of Non Oil, a Coelia Green Chain, just a little bit of Leviathan Purple. Now my first highlight on the model once the wash is dry is going to be a mix of the Reflective Green and some Olive Green, which I've used to lighten it a bit. Uh, I'm going to be applying this uh, layer pretty much everywhere because I only really want to really keep that super dark green and sort of really strong shadow areas like between his fingers, around his eyes, his mouth, and where there's sort of a dividing line with, between the skin and the clothing. But it's not going completely to waste here because it is sort of setting the tone for the whole figure and it's giving us a base for everything and, and, and since the, as we know acrylics are quite transparent it will kind of show through and have an effect on the overall look of the finished figure. And then I'm going to apply yet another highlight, and this one is very similar to the last one, though I've now mixed in uh, even more of the olive green just to brighten things up slightly. I think with um, a figure like this where there's actually a lot of flesh showing and it's kind of an unusual color and it's kind of a focal point of the figure, it's important to maybe mi mix more layers and um, graduations of tone than you might normally. So I'm going a little farther than usual here, basically. <laughs> 
And for my next highlight, I've moved on to just pure olive green, which is quite a bright color, but it's also a very transparent paint, which means that uh, to really reach its full intensity, you have to apply several layers, which is what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to be taking advantage of that. I'm going to be really starting to hit up areas now where I really want there to be a lot of light to be hitting, where I want it to feel bright, and I'm going to be building it up on you know several coats in order to get it extra bright in some areas, and then slightly more subtle um, in other areas. And you can see, since this model has these two figures, it's really clear where there's areas of deep shadow going to fall and where there's not which makes it really easy. So I, you can see I'm really avoiding much highlighting sort of between where their heads are leaning together and sort of the left side of the Frankenstein monster's chest because it's obviously going to be darker and more in the shadows there. And that's kind of one nice thing about painting this model. It's really clear where there's going to be shadows and where there's going to be highlights, probably more so than what you would see on a more conventional figure. Uh, to go lighter at this point, I've now taken the olive green and I have mixed some off-white into it. So you can see I've got kind of a pastel grayish green color. Uh, since both of the monsters here, they're, they're kind of dead. They're made from body parts. When you're lightening the color of their flesh, and this holds true I think probably for any type of figure where you've got sort of something that's dead or sickly or something, uh, you don't want to be using warm colors to lighten your shades. Like, you know, normally I'd be using something like Iraqi sand or something on the more yellow side or on the more red side because that'll give you the impression of more warm uh, living flesh. But because these guys are dead, I'm using this kind of sickly gray color as my lightening shade and that will help further sort of reinforce that that sense that I want to give here. And this color, as you can see, is really just going to be going now just even more so than last on areas where I'm really trying to emphasize and highlight and show that there's quite a lot of light hitting the figure's skin. And as I said before, I really want there to be a lot of uh, subtle gradation, a lot of different um, levels of highlight on this figure and here I've just really mixed even more of off-white into my green. You can see how light it's really now and I'm just uh, emphasizing even further areas where light is. And you can see he's got a scar or on his belly and I'm emphasizing along sort of the bottom of that with a line so it looks like if light is hitting the figure from the top it's going to shine, it's going to cast sort of there on the sort of that bottom edge of the scar so by putting a really light paint there you create a, a sort of a natural and dramatic kind of emphasis and you can see also areas where I'm applying this color along his fingers um, sort of his chest because he's got sort of developed um, pecs there you know developed really developed muscles so I'm applying this color sort of really around the edges of those and of course areas that are obvious where I'd be highlighting if this is a normal figure so like his nose uh, the tops of his cheekbones, his chin, his lower lip, the tops of his ears. It's really all the same as when you're painting a figure with more natural skin tones. Uh, it's just you're using a totally different color palette, of course, because Frankenstein we know is, is kind of famous for his huge, heavy um, um, brow line. I'm being sure to really heavily emphasize that in particular with these lighter colors. Uh, and so I'm just going to go over this and, and then before I finish, I'm just going to make one final super high highlight where I'm going to really mix in a, a lot of that off-white and that is going to serve as really quite something like an edge highlight in that that's really only going to get dotted very sparingly on like the tips of his nose, his, his, uh, his brow, his t ears, his lip um, as an extra emphasis on the top of that scar because I want that to really stand out. Just maybe a little bit on his knuckles here. Just uh, just very sort of subtle, small amounts just to really make it stand out. And this color is an extremely light, pale green. So you don't want to use it too much because I still want him to have a nice, dark, rich skin tone overall. 
Now I'm gonna start on the bride, and her the technique for her skin is a little bit different. One, because she's female, and two, from all the movies and things you see of her, she doesn't have this sort of bright, vivid green skin, usually like the monster does her. Uh, her complexion is usually much just more pale and deathly looking but it just has a slight green cast to it. And I wanna emphasize that anyway, because I want there to be a, sort of a consistency, a sort of cohesion between the two figures. So I'm base coating her face here by taking some off-white and sort of greening it up very subtly with some olive green. And next I'm gonna apply a pretty thin wash here of Leviathan Purple and Koala a Green Shade. It, it, and it needs to be subtle because they're pretty heavy colors. So you'll wanna water this down. You can see it's already having a pretty strong effect. I'm gonna start highlighting her skin now and I'm just using the off-white again with a very small amount of green in it. It needs to be very, very subtle, but we want her skin to really come out as more sort of an unhealthy gray color than we want it to come off as really like jolly green giant over there. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm applying it very thinly, very smoothly at first. And um, if you wanna know more about painting women figures it's a little bit different than painting men we basically want everything to be more subtle more smooth less sharp stark contrast i, I did a tutorial on painting boudica you can check that out if you want more on a more conventional looking female figure but here the concept or the principle is basically the same we're just using weirder colors but i the base that i used is lighter for one thing, because women usually have a lighter skin tone, so we've started out with a lighter color. Our um, wash was more subtle, and now the color we're applying here is also quite light. And uh, you're gonna avoid some things like, like the, very, the sort of sharp division between um, the, the upper lip and sort of the sides. It's often very dark lines there on a man. On a female, you don't want that to be very, you want that to be really subtle. So you need to make sure you just are smoother and you don't make any real sharp, hard edges or angles on her face. And so I'm just gonna apply this very, very carefully. And despite that, there are still some areas on her that I need to be extra dark, like between her fingers and around her eyes. So I've taken some German gray and mixed a little of that olive green, a little bit of Vallejo purple into it, and I'm using it to kind of get extra um, shade into those areas. I'm also going to get a little bit of purple kind of over her eyelids and her lips, and I've just done that by taking, mixing extra Vallejo purple into my sort of light greenish gray shade that I already had. I'm just gonna apply that um, very, uh, very, very subtly indeed. Um, and then, yeah, so then that's just a question of a little bit of smoothing and, you know, just working everything over the figure um, the way I would like. And I'm going to finish off her face with a really high highlight here, um, and this is just going to be Vallejo white. And but I have I have added just just a touch of green. It needs to be very very small. But I'm going to be you see applying this very transparently, like on her forehead, her nose, her chin, her upper cheeks, um, and it's it's interesting. You would probably never go this light on a uh, male figure for the most part, but for whatever reason, it just looks better if you do that on female figures. And I think it helps sort of differentiate them a little bit um, as well. And part of that here, of course, is that she's kind of extra, she's dead and made out of body parts, so I am gonna wanna paint her lighter. I've also taken a little of that light white and use it to put a little highlight sheen on her lips. And, you know, but I, and as far as I'm concerned with this, you really just can't go too high with applying emphasis layers. But as with the man, you want to sort of gradually uh, tone the back in the amount and sort of thickness of the layers that you're applying to the um, figure. Next, I'm going to start working on the clothing. I'm going to do uh, the Frankenstein monster first. I'm going to just give him sort of a dark black gray suit here so to get that going I need to first just base coat everything with black this is easy enough to do but you have to be extra careful not to get the black paint on those areas of skin you already have done and like I did for example I had to spend a lot of time cleaning up some messes but otherwise this is really just a question of being careful with what you're doing 
My first highlight on the black suit is just going to be my sort of usual German gray. Uh, and you can see I'm applying this to sort of all of the areas where I think there's going to be any kind of light hitting. Again, I'm using the fact that these two figures are sort of leaning together. So I'm sort of keeping away from areas like under his arms and where he's sort of kind of in towards her, I suppose, and sort of blending the paint out in those areas. And I'm being maybe a little bit more sort of artistic here in my brush strokes, and by that I mean they're, they're a little bit rougher, a little bit more streaky, maybe not so smooth or fine as what I often do. I'm just being a little bit more blocky. I'm doing that on purpose. It's sort of a conscientious <clears throat> style choice, I guess. But you can see I'm really just applying this color overall to nearly everywhere except you know where I really think the suit is going to be darker and there's going to be some really deep shadows hitting the figure. And then it's really going to be a question of continuing on in the same way, continuing to emphasize um, the more sharp creases and brighter areas of the figure with light lightening colors of paint and I'm just taking the German gray now and lightening it with neutral gray. And the other thing I'm doing here, I should point out, is I'm taking some Vallejo purple and I'm mixing that into each of my layers so that my gray gets a subtle purple cast to it. Why am I doing that? Well, um, I don't know for me, there's this, this sort of nice um, interplay that you get with purple and green. They're not really complementary colors, but they work really nicely together, especially if you're going for something a little bit supernatural looking, I guess. So uh, you might have no noticed that earlier on, too, I was working little bits of purple wash into some of what I was putting on the skin, and I'm going to be more um, forceful with that now. So every time I lighten my gray for the, this suit and add new highlight layers, I'm keeping a, per a real consistent purple tone into it. And you're not, it's, it's not going to be anything that's really going to hit you over the head when the figure's done, but it's going to, it's got this, it's going to give this whole thing a sort of subtle um, unity that I just think is going to work really nicely. So um, I'm just I'm going to keep on like this. I think I probably ended up lightening uh, the gray um, maybe two or three extra times. You can really do this to taste. Your final uh, highlight layer, as always, um, should really be used mostly as an edge highlight, so on the tops of really sharp creases, around cuffs and uh, around the lapel, um, the tops and folds of wrinkles, you, you want to keep that really last level sort of uh, to a minimal, minimum and as a really strong accent just on areas that are just going to be the most bright part of the figure. Now for the bride's dress, and uh, traditionally she wears, instead of sort of dark color, she tends to always be dressed in a very light, white, kind of gray gown, and that's what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, I made my base coat here, I think uh, using, I was either sky gray or off-white, it doesn't really matter, they're pretty close together, sky gray is a little bit darker, but uh, as you can see I have mixed in a very small hint of purple to this again because it, uh, as I said, we want to, we're going for this sort of purple theme along with the green throughout, so I'm trying to consistently work it into all of the colors. And this is just the base coat here, and we just want to do the same, we were just really, I should say, have the same concerns we did when we were painting the Frankenstein Monsters clothing, and that is just be careful about applying this so that you don't mess up your previous uh, work on the figure and have to spend a lot of time cleaning things up. I'm then going to get a further sort of definition and darkness in the creases by taking a very light wash of uh, Leviathan purple mixed with null oil. And this should be quite thin because we're washing a very light surface. So we want it to be subtle. We don't want it to be too extreme or in your face. So I've added a lot of water and I'm just gonna apply that everywhere so it gets in the wrinkles. And once I've got it on, I'm also gonna go back over with my brush a little bit and, and I make sure it doesn't pool or there's no areas where there's sort of unevenness or that the pigment doesn't is, is not like nice and smooth and uh, flowing on the figure. 
Once the wash is dry, you can start highlighting. I'm beginning here with a bit of off-white with just, again, just a whisper of the purple in it. Uh, it should be less than what was in the base coat here. It just needs to be ever so subtle. And I'm gonna just start layering that on um, to all the areas where light would be hitting the figure basically and because we're working here with a light transparent color it's out, and in some ways easier than with the Frankenstein monster we had to mix more shades of color to highlight his suit but with this you can just because it's so light you can just make a couple of colors and just keep building them up and layering them over and over again to get the outfit whiter and whiter and lighter and lighter um, as you go so that you're going to probably want to take this, you'll go around with this sort of off-white mix a couple of times all over all the higher areas of the gown to get it built up as much as it possibly can before you move on to uh, um, a different color combination. And indeed, that next uh, color that you should use in a highlight here is just going to be pure white. Again, with just a whisper of purple in it. You can barely tell it's there, but it is. And just doing the same thing. Uh, white is, again, a very, very transparent color, so you're going to need to apply uh, several layers of it and sort of build it up more and more and more till you get um, a strong enough color to suit you. And you can see I'm really starting to focus now really on the fronts and really the highest parts of all the folds and wrinkles of the garment. On the sleeve she's got sort of wrappings around her arms so you're just going to make sure you sort of follow those wrappings on the surface and make sure you preserve that sort of wash and that dark paint down in the recesses. And you can um, use um, some um, just blending, kind of blend the color out here as you work so that it is smooth and the transition down into the recess is, is very um, natural looking um, and, you know, convincing. Uh, this is this is really sort of a case study, this dress in painting folds and wrinkles and stuff. And it is, it can be tedious, but it's, I recommend, even if not on this figure, that you try painting a garment like this sometimes or sometime uh, in a light color because it's a really good uh, way to practice uh, painting fabric and folds and, you know, just, deal, just dealing with this and working on something like this. It will make you a better painter and, you know, I, I just highly recommend it. Um, I can, you, can, you can finish off here by just taking some pure white as a final highlight um, and layering it on. And if you want that to go a little faster, as I've mentioned in previous videos, you can just choose not to thin the paint as much. You can use it uh, very thick, um, almost out of the bottle, and really just get so that way that you can very quickly get a super bright, super white highlight on areas that really, really need it. But I'm, I'm not, my goal with this, uh, this outfit was not necessarily to make it look like it's white. It's not necessarily supposed to be white. It's, it could, it's just sort of maybe a gray or it's, it's just some color. It's, it's not important here that this become white. So you don't necessarily have to worry about um, making it look, you know, uniformly bright overall. I'm then going to move on to the monster's hair. I already base coated it black when I was working on the Frankenstein monster suit. Now I'm going to do just a little bit of very subtle highlighting. It's, it's supposed to be black hair and I don't want it to get go overboard here and let it get too light. So I'm going to use sort of a light overbrush here of um, German gray kind of to get a little bit of highlight going. And then you can mix in just a little bit of extra neutral gray if you want and use that to get even higher highlight, especially on say um, the Frankenstein monster. I would consider doing that around sort of the top um, edge of his flat head because the, with hair kind of shines, there's gonna be likely to be the most shininess sort of going around that edge, top edge of his head. Um, and yeah, again, just use it lightly and overbrush it. Um, and then you can finish off by sort of using a wash to help bring everything together, kind of unify the hair so it doesn't look too dusty. And I'm here again relying on purple, so I've taken a wash of the Leviathan purple again, and I'm going to be putting this prettily, prettily, pretty heavily onto the figure's hair. And even though it's, it's a really strong purple color because we're applying it to this very dark black gray surface, you're really not gonna get really much more than a very sort of subtle tint. 
I'm then gonna work on the monster's boots and belt, which I've decided to do in a sort of warmish uh, gray leather, which I like just because it gives a little warmth and a little contrast to other, all the otherwise kind of cool, sickly colors that we've got going on here. So to start out, I'm just going to apply a base coat of German camouflage black brown to everything. And then I'm going to use the, the highlight colors I generally apply on leather. So I'm starting out here with um, a Foundry Bay Brown Medium. And that's going to be going onto pretty much all the areas of leather except for all of the creases and lines and all the, you know, and all the really deep shadows. So there aren't any here really like that. So just most everywhere except where there's not lines or place that need to be divided. You can, it's a kind of a strong color, so if you want a little transparency, a little of that extra dark brown to show through, you can kind of apply it thinly, blend it a little bit out. Um, then once that's done, I'm going to move on to the um, Foundry Chestnut Shade color, and I'm going to start applying it a little bit more carefully. I'm going to focus on the heels of his boots, uh, the sort of any sort of, if there's any sort of wrinkles or folds in the leather, sort of along the edges of those, especially onto the toes of his boots. And these are quite big, chunky boots, so you're going to be doing a little bit more work here than you would on normal, smaller shoes. But I'm going to be applying that color there, uh, really uh, blending it out in that case, because I don't want it to be, you know, too in your face. I want it to look kind of like, kind of complex. I want nice, um, layers, nice nuanced um, worn leather. So I'm going to be applying it in a couple layers, sort of just progressively blending it out to get nice effects. And you don't want to apply these lighter leathers or light leather colors so much in sort of between his legs because that area, A, you can't see it as well, you can't reach it as well, and it's just going to be darker back there. And we're talking about his belt, you're going to be wanting to apply these lighter shades, especially sort of along the top as an edge highlight, maybe blending it down a little bit, something like that. And then as always, I'm gonna finish off with chestnut medium, and I'm gonna be doing a similar thing, but just even less. So I'm gonna apply very small amounts and blend it out uh, on the tips of his boots. You can kind of make even like little crosshatch blotchy marks with your brush to really make it look like wear patterns. And on the other areas, it's really gonna be a pure edge highlight. So just thin, light line of it in those places, all you need, just edging around all the seams on the shoes and on the belt and those kinds of things. One thing we don't want to forget about here is to finish the uh, bride's hair. Uh, the sort of iconic Bride of Frankenstein always has these white streaks going up the side of her hairdo where, I don't know, the lightning burned it or something. I don't know. Um, these are kind of sculpted into this figure a little bit, uh, but so, but anyway, it's, it's not so hard to do this. Uh, I'm just taking some uh, sky gray here and very carefully uh, tracing out where I want the lines to be on the side of her hairdo. And then I'm gonna go back in with just some pure white, uh, which I thinned a bit. And I'm just going to overbrush that uh, gray several times just to brighten up the surface of it until, you know, it looks the way I want, but there's still gonna be a little bit of gray down towards the sides and in the creases, giving it a little extra, you know, dimension and uh, subtlety. And then I'm going to finish off by working on the, a couple of metallic areas that we've got in this figure. I'm going to start out with the sort of steel metal areas. So I've made a mix here of German gray and of Leo Air silver. Um, I'm going to use that as the base coat, and I'm going to apply that to the blade of the bride's knife and also to the um, sort of power contacts on the side of the monster's neck. I'm then going to highlight those using just pure Valeria Silver, which I'm going to apply quite thinly and sort of build up. Uh, obviously on the knife blade, you're going to want it to be stronger. Um, and brighter towards the edge and on you can just kind of dab it on the top of those um, power pickups, those electrodes, whatever you want to call them, uh, to your taste. The brass bronze areas consist of some staples on the monster's head and then also his belt buckle. I'm base coating those with a mixture of German camouflage black brown and Vallejo Air Gold 
kind of as always. And then I'm just really quickly going to take some pure Vallejo Air Gold and just dab it on there just to get some extra brighter, shinier highlights. You can even go a little further on the belt buckle if you want by mixing a little bit of that Vallejo Air Silver into your uh, shade to get a really bright, shiny, uh, blingy finish. All right, and here is our finished uh, murderous uh, monster couple. Perhaps not the most conventional subject for a Valentine's Day video, but certainly a fun one, and I really enjoyed painting these guys. Uh, it's quite a departure from what I usually do, and sometimes stuff like that is just extra fun. I can't imagine any really great use for this um, particular model in a war game, but you know, sometimes, it's fun just to go out and do something unusual that you wouldn't always, even if it has no practical purpose, just, you know, because it, it makes you understand why you enjoy the hobby. It, it, you know, it reinforces how fun painting can be. So, you know, I really recommend you do that. And, you know, I hope you found this interesting, how to paint some weird skin tones. It's a lot like normal skin tones, really. It's just choosing a different color palette, but then the techniques are really very similar. Um, I, 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 and I really love how these guys worked out. Um, the green may be also particularly useful for some of you guys out there who like to do fantasy figures. There are obviously orcs and things like that who might benefit from a similar skin tone. And uh, in general, the bride, her undead flesh too, is going to be useful for a variety of sort of more fantasy type figures and armies. So once again, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know. Leave me comments on it. Um, you can like the video, share it with your friends, favorite it, and of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because then you can keep up with my updates, you know, as soon as I put them out there. Uh, so that is all for now, and I will see you next time.